it is piss poor argumentation. Typically, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, in, in most parts, so, uh, nothing really wrong with that, but his ultimate thing is that the Gentiles in which that Paul wrote to are in fact, not Israelites, right? That's his main point. Um, and you know, we, we discussed that with him, but through a lot of that, we ended up in a lot of different other places. Um, because his understanding of these things is predicated upon so many different obscure. And that's why it's, it's, it's difficult at times to even have conversations and, and debates with certain people, because when so much of what they believe is hinged upon so many things that are radically different from what you believe, um, it makes it like, it's better just to hone in on one topic. But when the topic is hinged on so many other topics, it makes it problematic and it and it kind of keeps us away from the main topic. Because if you watched, we discussed Paul and we discussed the Gentiles. But a lot of what we did was discuss other things, right? Because it was, you know, his, his understanding kind of led us there. And again, I don't know, you know, what spurred it. I have theories um, because I've seen you just have to appropriately understand the scriptures and understand that that's not who the Gentiles are. We have videos on it. We're going to go into it also. All right. That's not who the Gentiles are. The Gentiles are not Northern Kingdom. It's not who the Gentiles are. Um, and you said, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a poor argument. Uh, if you, if you're saying that. As we further commentate on this, if we don't get to it on this class, you know, most I will in the next one. But understanding who the Gentiles, in fact, are, who Paul is sent to, understanding the diaspora of Israelites throughout the Greco-Roman world is documented in the scriptures and is documented historically, right? But it's not the northern kingdom, right? So when you blanket, oh, Gentiles means northern kingdom, you sound silly and you have your jaw out to be knocked out. That's what this brother's point is. This is what one of our points are. We'll keep going with this, though, just to give a full. If you say it's the northern kingdom, you got your jaw out, you sound silly, all right? You, you, you finna get Mayweather. Um... Well, you're not finna get Mayweather. I guess you 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 finna get um I don't know, I'll let that go. But uh <laughs> you fin you finna get knocked out, your jaws out. Alright. Understand let's go to Ezra one. Mayweather didn't really, really want to knock him folks out. But anyway, um let's continue on. Scriptures are clear that they were majority off the scene you referenced a couple points where we could see some of them was around of course every single one of them was accorded in this area and then you know came in and i'm gonna tell y'all this man you know when he did the refute I, I don't know i think i watched all of it i can't remember this is about this is about six months ago five six months ago um when he did the refute hold on y'all let me cut this off when he did the refute he did do a good job on explaining um the, the diaspora of the northern kingdom um i would have went to all those same precepts i had no disagreements um scripture is clear that they're not around so that can't be um who was being talked to by paul number one so brothers most certainly um need to stop resorting to that i feel like uh it's kind of like the easy answer all that brothers feel like oh gentile oh that is the northern kingdom um now i do believe there's instances where it is referring to the northern kingdom but that's not who paul is talking to though um certainly not uh so brothers definitely got to get that out of their vocabulary and out of their mind when they feel like they could go there right certainly not wasn't talking to him certainly not um so i'm 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 i'm, I'm with you there we just establishing we just establishing um we just establishing the doctrine all right. 100 percent. So that's the first and foremost thing that I wanted to highlight, because that was. All right, we don't need it. We just yeah. to... as it is we written in Jer all throughout the entire oh, hold on. Sorry. That Bible. I was there, right? So. We'll get into some more of this like it. This is what I'm finna get that warning about this um 
I'm finna give the warning. That's on, the only way I uh, see that harmony. If we're saying only only Southern Kingdom or mostly or predominantly Southern Kingdom, we run into certain issues, uh, especially like in Romans 11, where we need three or four different pieces uh, to make that fit. And that's a hilarious statement, right? Like when we get to Romans 11, we need three or four different pieces. So it's not possible for Paul in his letter to be referencing three other prophecies. I don't understand why that's even a point. That's not a point at all. Go ahead. Well, what does he mean? What does he mean when he says we, we need three other pieces? I don't even know. Because are you saying that's what he means? It would have to be referencing or quoting three different prophecies. I think so. Well, then that's dumb. I won't. I'm not going to call the brother dumb. That line of reasoning is dumb because in Romans chapter nine, like back to back to back verses, he quotes three different mm -hmm. as it is written in Hosea, as it is written in Isaiah, mm -hmm. as it is Isn't written in Jer all throughout the entire chapter. Mm -hmm. So why is that so far fetched for him to do the exact same thing two chapters later? I don't even <laughs> maybe know. thirty like him writing it down maybe thirty minutes later. You see what I'm saying? Not as literally. he's writing the letter, literally. Yeah, I don't um. Again, all right. I gave them warning about the Romans 11. They don't really understand what I'm talking about because they, they're talking about prophecies. But Romans 11 is about the grafting in. And the video we're going to see is Brother DeBar going in Shalaki. I just don't know your rank, brother. But uh, Brother DeBar, or Officer DeBar, uh, he's, he's, he's doing a Sabbath class on Romans 11 in the grafting in. Romans 11 is about the grafting in. And so you have a, you have a, a natural tree. You have broken branches. You also have a, an unnatural. You actually have an unnatural tree. All right. And so you need at least three pieces. But if you're only saying that it's, it's the northern kingdom is not there and it's not being spoken of, then for the natural for the natural tree, you're going to say that's that's Israel. I mean, that's Jews. And then for the broken branches, you're going to say that's Jews. And then for the, for the, um, you're going to use, you got to use twice. You got to use something else twice. So for the unnatural tree, who's the unnatural tree? So you got broken branches that's going to be grafted back in. You got an unnatural tree that's going to graft, be grafted in. Um, and then you got a, you got a tree. You got a natural tree. So if the natural tree is Israel, and the broken branches. Who are the broken branches? I, I'm not gonna tell you, um, but that's what I would need. That's what I would need to see. Uh, who are the broken branches? We gonna see what like, again what brother uh, the bar says. But you need to have all of those filled in, and then you gotta make that make sense. Who would you go? Who are you gonna call an unnatural tree that shouldn't be grafted in according to nature? Who are you gonna call? The Jews, the Northern Kingdom, who are you, the rich, the rich rulers, the rulers of the, the ruling class of Jews? Who are you going to call an unnatural tree? Who are you going to call the orange tree trying to get grafted in to an apple tree? Who are you going to call those people? And it, we really not going to see it, to be honest with you. You're not going to see it in the, in, uh, the bars video either, but. Uh, let's also deal with the jealousy because <clears throat> we talked about that also. And this it's going to be from A my Gentiles video. to provoke provocation and jealousy. Now, let me just give you some clarity on this. Um, I went into the promoting them to jealousy. Okay. And I was saying that the, the nations will be provoked to jealousy. Paul is going to these, uh, Gentiles to provoke Israel to jealousy. All right. And he's going to go to some of the precepts that I went through. But like I say each of these videos only about two minutes. So y'all hang in there. I seen that damn Edomite. I said, man, ain't no goddamn way. Excuse the language. The children of God are struggling. And he's not right now. I need what he has. I'm going to go and get it. <laughs> right? Straight up and down. That's the. See, this is, he's establishing. 
<clears throat> I think right before this, y'all have to go back and watch the video, man. But I think right before this, I'm pretty sure right before this, he was talking about like he's establishing that Babylon. That Babylon is the nation under the nation that's not a nation. All right. He's going to establish that Babylon is the nation that is not a nation. All right. A people that is not a people. He's not going to go to uh, the Hosea. He's going to say he's establishing that Babylon are these people and he's using new references in modern time with Edomites having this great success and us being jealous of these Edomites here uh, or these other people here of Gentiles. We're being jealous. We're being uh, we're being jealous over the success or the rulership of the Gentiles. And we should have that. But let's let him speak provocation of jealousy so that's what we've experienced during babylon knowing we're supposed to be up here and we not so now but they try to take that and make it see no nah. the nations they gonna all get salvation no no <laughs> the voice man the voice the the, the, the voice though <laughs> no what's gonna make you jealous right and but that's the important part no there. no no what's that's gonna important make important part and i want to i want to know the nations they gonna all get salvation no 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 what's gonna make you jealous right is you're supposed to rule the world and you're at the bottom and somebody else gets to rule the world okay and that's where we disagree at all right that's the, the, the disagreement with this video uh he's saying that paul is promoting these folk provoking them to jealousy um you know <laughs> that they're richer that babylon is the nation there's a foolish nation that is a no nation he went into all of that to show that babylon was a uh was not a nation um and then uh he's he disagrees with my point that the gentiles uh the gentiles are provoking Israel to a jealousy because they are being uh, grafted into this thing. They are receiving salvation because we rejected Christ. And with our rejection, they was able to come in. They weren't able to come in before. It wasn't before and before. But because of our constant rejection, even the death of our brother Stephen, um, it kind of it kind of shifted things a little bit. But there their receiving salvation is to bring israel back is to make them jealous and pick up that 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 I, you was i was used this y'all heard me said several times if a kid is playing with a toy two kids playing with a toy matter of fact they ain't even playing with the toy the toy just sitting there all right you got two kids toy just sitting there one kid i feel it's the same way with Israel till the and just you know just establish but he's not lying on <laughs> y'all you know y'all done heard me use that thing, but i had to skip through it what i agree you know he's saying what i what i what i agree with so uh salute to the brother for that that's what's going to provoke you to jealousy right Go and so the provoking for jealousy for him is the other nations being above us in the other nations uh having riches and driving in lambos and, and maseratis and and so forth Go ahead. Bro, the route, nigga. <laughs> sometimes I be in. Bro, sometimes I saw a house so crazy today. I had to look it up. I literally, I said, what is this address? I looked it up. I said, God, this house is $15 million, bro. <laughs> it's all crazy. It's a labyrinth. Uh, but yeah, um, that was 50, a $15 million home, right? $15 million home. That's going to provoke Israel to jealousy. All right. And that, you know, again, that, that that goes against you know don't you know don't envy thy oppressor you know what i'm saying um and it's not like you can't get a 15 million dollar house it don't like we don't have people that have 15 million dollar houses uh, so we know what he you know i'm not gonna keep it on but we know we know what his stance is all right this <clears throat> his he's paul is not talking to the northern kingdom um they don't really know what I'm talking about with Romans. Uh, Babylon is who Paul is talking about provoking to jealousy. The provoking to jealousy is dealing with Paul. Because I went to the Deuteronomy 32. He's saying that that, that provoking that Paul's talking about is um, 
the the gentile the natural gen the natural gentiles but not because they got salvation but because they're ruling over us because um they're rich and um they're they're successful and they're powerful and we supposed to be up there so that's what's going to get you jealous and you know even him bringing it to modern times we got to understand that paul is dealing with a people or writing to a people at that very moment all right, he's he's magnifying his office at that very second. And so whoever he's talking to, if you're saying he's talking to um, he says he's magnifying his office to make Israel jealous. How are you like that magnifying? You mean for your with your logic, with the logic that chief priest just gave us um, or the methodology that he just gave us that it's it's about making people rich that mean paul is out here you know teaching people how to you know how to day trade you know paul is teaching people how to get these coins so he can make people so he can make the uh, so he can make israelites jealous he's saying the jealousy is make it because people these rulership and these gentiles are are, are over us so whoever Paul is speaking to and he's trying to provoke and he's magnifying his office to provoke Israel to jealousy to his methodology, that means Paul is over here making these folks rich. All right, y'all. Now, now we establish what um, we establish Eleazar's premise. Um, let's, let's look at what was taught. Just pass your bot. Um. Keep going. Let me just do, I don't know. Let's get Romans 8 and 28, because this is what the context start. What he's talking about in Romans 11. It's the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. Uh -huh. And we know that all things work together for good uh -huh. to them that love God, uh -huh. to them who are called according to his purpose. Who are what? Called according to his purpose. Who is called? Israel, right? Israel are the ones called. But let's go to Isaiah, because remember I said Isaiah is going to play a, a pivotal part into what we're talking about with... um. Who was called? Israel was called. He's going to drop a couple precepts to show that Israel is the called with Paul. So give me Isaiah uh, 45 and 4. So let's get who the called is, right? It's the book of Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For Jacob, my servant's sake, mm -hmm. and Israel, my elect. Go ahead. I have even called thee by thy name. I have what? Called thee by thy name. So who is Paul is talking about? He's talking about the called. The called is Israel. So The called is Israel. Alright? And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and stop it there, but he brought a few more precepts out to establish that the called is israel that's that's romans 8 he's at right now remember that called was israel that's romans 8 26 that he was dealing with it was and went to isaiah to establish <laughs> NAACP. he's not even fat no more he's like he's like like that's what he wrote too he's like, hey, he's like skinny now bro yeah that's <laughs> yeah. but this is what it's saying we don't even seek the most high god right Wait, that's from verse one finish it i said here i am here i am to a nation that did not call on my name. He said, here I am, here I am. And how he does that with every time the brothers go out on the streets, bro. The most high is yelling to him through the mouth of his prophets. Here I am, here I am. I'm right here. Everything you need to know. Ask these people, ask these brothers the question. They got the answers. All right, keep going. No, that's the end of the first one. What, what's that, was the NLT? Yeah, I got ESV right here. Read the ESV. Isaiah 65 and 1 in the ESV. I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. Uh-huh. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. Yeah, he's ready to be found. We're not even seeking the Lord. Go ahead. I said, here I am, here I am to a nation that was not called by my name. That was not what? Called by my name. Yo. But they'll take all this stuff and think that's just talking about goddamn heathens. We're the nations <laughs> that is literally called by the most high name who's acting like we're not called by the most high name, right? So uh, go, we still in there? Uh, read verse 2. Isaiah um, 65 and 2. We're going to read all the way down to 9. This is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 2 through 9. Mm -hmm. I have spread out my hand all the day unto a rebellious people, uh -huh. which walketh in a way that was not good, mm -hmm. after their own thoughts. After their what? Own thoughts. Yeah, this is dealing with Israelite. They're going after their own thoughts instead of coming back to the Most High and seeking Him 
to get out of this oppression. Go ahead. A people that provoketh me to anger continually mm -hmm. to my face. Go ahead. That sacrifices in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Keep going. Which remain among the graves, the lodge in the monuments, mm -hmm. which eat swine's flesh. Which eat swine's flesh. Go ahead. And broth of abominable things. What is that? It's talking about that damn gumbo. Swine's flesh, gumbo. All this stuff that the Israelites do right now. It's from the soup. Yeah, madness. Madness. But sitting right now, a Christian, especially an Israelite Christian, I'm talking about that Hispanic and that black person, mm. they'll fight you tooth and nail to say they can eat some goddamn pig. Right here, the most high condemning that stuff. Who eats swine's flesh? Who eat that gumbo? They fight harder for lobster tail and shrimp. Oh man, oh my god. <laughs> they, they they do murder fat. Yeah, it's, it's just madness, right? I mean, if you want to spell on it, go ahead, bro. Keep going. And broth of abominable things mm -hmm. is in their vessels, mm -hmm. which say, stand by thyself. And so let's look at what he's what, what he's quoting here. It says, start at Romans 10 and 19. It says, but I say, did not Israel know? It says, first Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. We've seen in the video, Alazar, I mean, uh, Eliot, Alazar thinks that, or chief priest thinks that, this is or teaches that this is you know the heathen nations the foolish nation the that there are no people that is babylon okay babylon is not a people they are the foolish nation and today they are the rich heathens that have the riches that we supposed to we supposed to have the children of god are struggling and he's not right now i need what he has I'm going to go and get it <laughs> right straight up and down. You know, those riches really is the salvation. All right. There's no, there's no greater riches than the kingdom than entering into the kingdom. Um, let's read verse 20. It says, but Isaiah is very bold. Okay. Isaiah is very bold and said, I found of them that sought me not i was made manifest unto them that asked not after me now brother debar wants to make this see chief priest is making this heathens debar wants to make this next verse israel but israel is very bold and say if i was found of them isaiah was very bold isaiah was very bold of them that uh and say if i found of them i was found of them that sought me not and made and I was made manifest unto them that acts not after me. Okay. But to Israel, and see that's where that's like, but to Israel, that's what's showing me it's a difference. This ain't 10 ain't Israel. 10 is a, a talked about somebody else, 10 and 19. But he, he comes in verse 21 and says, But to but to Israel. He say, of all day long, I stretch forth my hand to a disobedient gang. Sample. You wouldn't have to have no but. All right. We don't have to. We don't have to put foolish nation. We don't have to have nation there. We can have Israel there. You don't have to say foolish nation. They don't have to say I was sought by a people that was not a people. And and and, and uh, I was I was sought of them and made myself manifest unto them that didn't act after me. All right, we know these are made manifest unto Israel, but now he's saying, but to Israel, he saith all day long, I stretch over my hands to a disobedient and gang saying people. And watch this. This way he's in this where it's being pulled from. This is where he's pulling it from Isaiah 65 and one. The brother read it and he read a couple of different other versions because he wants that call by my name. He wants that to be and they did not call my name. Okay, he wants that to be that. He has to have that to be that in order to try to change this. And again, if you watch the end to the end of the video, I got Deacon uh, bringing this, es not eschatology, but this, this I guess it's a hermeneutic principle about, um, about application and fulfillment. Um, is it applicable? He's using it to, to apply something, but it's not to fulfill something, but you'll watch it's like the last five minutes of the video. Um, I am sought of them that asked for, not for me, for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. And so he wants this to be that was not caught that does not call on my name. Um, and then it's really Israel. And he said, yeah, man, we Israelites and we just not calling on the father name.
And um, he needs that to try to make, to try to transform all of this to being spoken to Israel because he just put himself out there saying that the call, okay, those called by his name, those called are Israelites. That had already been uh, established, but this is, that was not called. Who is called? Israel, right? Israel are the ones called. Okay. And so... He has to play, you know, with these translations to uh, apply this. But when you do that, you know, you open the door for other things uh, also. And you, you know, for other things also to slip through the cracks, just like Deacon will will will, will show. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen. Uh, let's continue on. He's going to deal with Romans this 9. This is to provoke to jealousy. This is what it's talking about. Hold on. Even though, right. He's not worthy to be an Israelite. Go ahead. Verse 22. But the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe. Yeah, but you repent it. Bring forth the best robe, right? Go ahead. And put it on him. And put a ring on his hand. Uh, right now, say we got the call to being Israel. Right now, we got him dealing with the provoking of the jealousy. And to to establish the who's the who's being provoked and so forth, he uses the parable of the prodigal son. The parable of the prodigal son to establish uh, where the provoking is coming from. Now we've seen Eleazar, chief priest, say that the provoking to jealousy was Gentiles. Okay, they were natural Gentiles that were rich. He's now we have the bar using the prodigal son to establish that it's Israel provoking Israel. Shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Yeah, right. So, uh, where you at now? 24 at the beginning. You got over there from the end of 23. All right, you read 24 and we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go all the way to 30. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. Mm -hmm. He was lost and is found. So, his, his son was dead and now he's alive again. He was now his elder son was and act. What's these things meant? And he said unto him, like angry. Go ahead. I'm only skipping through because I, I, you know, I, I assume that most of us know the prodigal son story. All right, you know the prodigal son story. That one brother uh, gets a little envious of the other brother. And would not go in. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time by commandment. Mm -hmm. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. You know what he did? He provoked him to jealousy. <laughs> He's hated. <laughs> He's provoked to jealousy. The now I want you to understand what 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 the what the what the older brother said. The brother said, I've never I've never broke the commandments. Um and you haven't done anything for me, but this joker who's out here, wow, not keeping nothing. You did something for him. Now, this is going to probably be a little problematic. I'm going I'm to watch it play out, but we're going to see uh, this be kind of, this going this gonna to be problematic when you're on who he's going to establish the older brother to be uh, within this. So I would assume the older brother would be the rich, the ruling Jews and then... The younger brother being the one who's not keeping the commandments. And I'm going to show you why I think that's problematic. The fact that your own brother repented and came back and now they having this like lavish party. But you've been with the father this whole time. Why are you hating on your brother repent? All this is parables that Paul is talking about. That Yahushua Mashiach was explaining to the Israelites, right? And yeah, you know, I was talking to um, Bella. Uh, 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 Alizar this morning um, and I was saying you know Paul wasn't walking with Christ Paul didn't walk with Christ and so it'll be a reach to think that Paul uh, knows this parable about the prodigal son um, because he wasn't walking with Christ uh, he was given uh, a gospel to minister to uh the gentiles you know but was he giving the prodigal son did he know about the prodigal son being that his letters were first um it's, it's a little reachy it's a little reachy doing that saying that you know he's referencing this but uh oh yeah but as soon as that as this thy son was come which have devoured thy living with harlots 
thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. Yeah, you did all this for this man, and I've been here this whole time. The brothers are hated, bro. <laughs> he provoked them to jealousy, right? So he it's a what? Great parable. It's a great parable. So let's go back to Romans eleven eleven. This is now imagine what's being said here. Uh, Israel who's been keeping the laws finally get some other Israelites to start keeping the laws and Israel got jealous and Israel got jealous all the while you know the Pharisees by you know your house I was telling the Pharisees that you know, y'all cross ocean and sea to make one convert. Even in that debate, that dialogue, I asked him, did you know about the Hasmonean dynasty? Did you, did you know that Israel converted Edomites? And brother said, yes, we know. We know that they converted Edomites. We know that, you know, it's a half Edomite, it's an Edomite. That's root. That's the king of Judea. We know that. We know about the Herodians. <clears throat> but yet. They let them be Jews. Or they, they converted them to Judaism. They made them proselytes. But they were hating that the other Israelites who are really blood-born Israelites are coming back to the faith. That's what we're saying. To provoke to jealousy, this is what it's talking about. Book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Mm -hmm. God forbid, but rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Yeah, salvation has came to them Israelites that was acting like heathens, but the ones who was already Israelites who was keeping the customs, right? He did what to them? For to provoke them to jealousy. They're provoked to jealousy. You know why? He's provoking the Israelites who's keeping the laws to jealousy you know we out here trying to keep these laws and god trying to make us jealous why would he try to make the people who's doing it jealous he's finna tell us because when your i was on the scene they never accepted him as the king so, so they keeping the commandments but they didn't accept your as king and so now he's finna make them jealous by having somebody else keep the commandments. And it's the thing. They didn't believe Yahweh was king for a reason. They had, you know, they had certain, they had certain ideology. They had certain, certain doctrine. That made them not believe that he was the king. They thought he was born in Galilee. They didn't know he was born in Bethlehem. So it, it wasn't like, you know, they don't believe a Messiah is coming. They ain't believe on him. But I don't know. I don't know how, you know, someone's keeping the commandments. Uh, and you're saying they didn't believe. And then at the same time, Paul, uh, some of those Pharisees and Sadducees did believe. You know, they did believe. I'm talking about when Paul uh, is, is in his ministry. You know, the big the big problem with them is that they were trying to make them folks get circumcised. That was one of the big issues. But let's continue on. Now what? We go to the Gentiles. We go to the Israelites who lost their identity. Who lost and we and then when did we lose our identity? When did Israel lose their identity after? OK, give me the precepts for after we rededicated the temple that we lost our identity. And then the same people you're saying that are the ruling class, they are the most Hellenized people. This is why they're the ruling class. Because they're totally, they want, the Sadducees want to be like the Romans. The Herodians want, they love Herod to the point of thinking that he might be even God. And Herod is connected to the Romans. He's building the Colosseums. To appease the Romans. He's building the Caesarea. To appease, to appease the Romans. So they are the most Hellenized people. It's not the poor people. That are Hellenized. Even when it says they come in. It says that them Grecians walked in. 
those were Hellenized Jews. They were Hellenized because they were the and they they was the ruling class. They were the bosses. But they kept the law, but they had the, the, the ruling class. They had the Roman citizenships. Paul had the Roman citizenship. But how far are you going to take this Hellenization after the second temple? After, after the Maccabeans went and circumcised every Jew that they could find. Where are the precepts to come back and say that Israel done lost their identity? After they don't rededicate, after they're still celebrating the dedicate their feast of dedication. Lost their customs, and we bring them back. That's what it's talking about, right? Because the thing is, the ruling class of the Israelites is no better than the Israelites who are acting like heathen. We're all the same. Like Yahweh Shai said, what we all work for that one penny. Yeah. Nobody is better than nobody. From the least to the greatest. We're all the same. We're all working for that one spot in the kingdom. Right, which you also got to remember at that time, a lot of the ones that were stayed in the land, that stayed to the, uh, the customs and traditions, mm -hmm. they didn't deal with the people outside of Israel. That's right. I don't know what he's talking about. Before, but go ahead. But the election hath obtained it. But that election, you know what's so crazy about that? That's 10, right? Yeah, chapter 10, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. That's the last verse of 10, right? Yeah. So let's go to, uh, now let's go to Romans 10 and uh, 11 and 1, right? Romans 11, chapter 1. I say then. I say what? I say then. We'll show you all this was a continuance of what he was previously talking about. I might have pulled the wrong video. Hopefully, you hit this video first. I say then. Y'all hold on. Wrong of abominable things. Mm -hmm. In double ACP. <laughs> he's not even fitting over there. He's like, he's like, like, that's hey, what he wrote too. He's like, hey, he's like, skinny down, bro. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah. But this is what it's saying. We don't even seek the most high God, right? Wait, that's from verse 1. Let's finish it. I said, here I am. Here I am. To a nation that did not call on my name. He said, here I am to him. Here I am to a nation that didn't call on my name. Like, what he's going to get confused with is the fact that, yes, Israel is talked about. But is, it, that doesn't mean that Israel is the one that being talked to. All right. Israel's being talked about. But every time he's talking about Israel is in a bad light. All right, Romans 8, 9, 10, 11, every time Paul is speaking about Israel, it's always about their unbelief, their blindness, their, their unrighteousness, their, 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 their zeal not to listen to God. Here I am, here I am. And, how he and so he, he just read a verse, here I am, here I am. He does that every time the brothers go out in the streets, bro. The most high is yelling to him through the mouth of his prophets, here I am, here I am. I'm right here. Everything you need to know. Ask these people, ask these brothers a the question. They got the answers. All right? Keep going. No, that's the end of the first one. What, which that was the NLT? Yeah, I got ESV right here. Read the ESV. Isaiah. Brother, uh, I watched this because brother jumped about four or five different translations. Like, you know, I'm all for, you know, I'm all for, but man, you know, you can't, don't go crazy with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, one, hey, yeah, I ESV. Know. I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. Uh -huh. I was ready to be I was ready to be sought to those that didn't ask for me. Be found by those who did not seek me. Yeah, he's ready to be found. We're not even seeking the Lord. Go ahead. I said, here I am, here I am to a nation that was not called by my name. That was not what? Called by my name. Yeah. But they'll take all this stuff and think that's just talking about goddamn heathens. We're the nations that is literally called by the most high name who's acting like we're not called by the most high name, right? Remember I told y'all to talk about that who who was called? All right, who, who the called? So we established earlier that the call is Israel, and now we see here a people that's not called by his name. We're seeing that this is um, this is Israel too. So you have a people that's called by his name, called the called is Israel, but the called not by my name is Israel also. So uh, go, we still in there? Uh, read verse 2, Isaiah um, 65 and 2. We're going to read all the way down to 9. This is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 2 through 9. Mm -hmm. I have spread out my hand all the day unto a rebellious people, uh -huh. which walketh in a way that was not good, mm -hmm. after their own thoughts. After their what? Own thoughts. Yeah, this is dealing with Israelite. They're going after their own thoughts instead of coming back to the Most High and seeking Him to get out of this oppression. Go ahead. Again, Israel, wickedness. A people that provoketh me to anger continually mm -hmm. to my face. Go ahead. That sacrifices in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Keep going. Which remain among the graves, the lodge in the monuments, mm -hmm. which eat swine's flesh. Which eat swine's flesh. Go ahead. And broth of abominable. And that's another thing. 
he's being provoked to jealousy because you're dealing with another God. And I don't know why it don't make sense for him to provoke us to jealousy by dealing with another people. Why don't that make sense? Things. What is that? It's talking about that damn gumbo. Swine's flesh, gumbo. All this stuff that the Israelites do right now. Yeah, Israelites <laughs> dealing with that gumbo, that dog gumbo. But, but we love that. We love them crab legs. But that juicy crab that made all kinds of money. Uh, mm -hmm. sick My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. All right, so watch how watch how we can't even read Romans nine. Like, because we have these pre notions, we can't even really. You have to slow down and read the text, and really see what it's saying. But again, all of these texts that he's going through, it's all, it's all negative. All right, Paul's saying all negative things, and even this Roman nine is negative. We read it like it's something positive, but if we really listen to ourselves and really slow down and read the text, you'll see that it's negative also. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Go ahead. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. His brethren, his brothers, go ahead. My kinsmen. See? See how he just pulled his brethren. His brethren. He said, I have great sorrow and pain in my heart. I wish I was accursed. Meaning, I wish I was severed. I wish I was severed and separated from Christ. And if you're separated from Christ, you're going to die in that lake of fire. You cannot get into the kingdom without that blood. Without being covered with that blood. Without faith in Christ, you are not entering into that kingdom. And yet, he's saying, I wish I, could, I wish I would be severed. I wish I would, I wish I could go to the lake of fire so that I can save my brethren. So that I can save Israel. Again, Everything he's talking about is Israel is in trouble. Israel is in trouble. They're blinded. His kinsmen, his kinfolk, go ahead. According to the flesh. According to the what? According to the flesh. This is dealing with the flesh, go ahead. Who are Israelites. Keep going. To whom pertain the adoption. So the Israelites get the adoptions, go ahead. And the glory. And the glory, go ahead. And the covenant. And the covenants, go ahead. And the giving of the law. Keep going. And the service of God. Keep and going. the promises. And the promises. All this stuff go to the Israelites. So what don't make sense if he's writing to the church of Rome and this is some mixed ethnic, um, mixed like multinational church that got all types of heathen in it. Why the hell is he telling them all this stuff that goes to the Israelites? Let me tell you that because it's it's a darn shame that they they have this they 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 supposed to get the promises, the covenants, the the giving of the law, the service of the Lord, and these jokers is not seeking God like he just said. These jokers all day long, he stretched forth his hand to a disobedient and gangsaying people. All right. And these people are not doing what they supposed to do. But they were some, they were promised all of these things. They were given all of these things. And they just they counted as dumb. They still go serve other gods. This is what he's telling them. Y'all thinking this a good thing because of the precept packets. Paul is, is sorrowful that these people would not listen, man. Sorrowful that these folks just keep walking by their camp. <laughs> and he's telling them, man, all this stuff belongs to you. You the sons of God. You're God's chosen nation of people. He counted as dumb. Wouldn't that be discouraging if you're a heathen? Damn, man, I'm in the church of Rome and all this stuff is for the Israelites? What about me? We don't, do nothing. We don't get nothing. We'll show you what. He was only dealing with the damn Israelites. That's a negative. We ain't even got to Romans 11 yet. And we're proving he's only dealing with the Israelites. Because with context, right? Context, context, context. Let's keep going. Verse 6. Oh, no, verse 5. So, mm -hmm. like, whose are the fathers? Uh -huh. And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came? Concerning the what? Flesh. Concerning your fathers, concerning the flesh. This is who Christ came for. Go ahead. Christ came, who is over all. Who is what? Over all. The Israelites are over all. This is what Paul is saying. Who are over all. Go ahead. God bless uh -huh. forever. Amen. Amen. So be it. Thank God we're above everybody. This is what Paul is saying. Who is over all. I don't know if I would connect that. I don't know if I would connect that. I don't want to spend too much time here to connect right, that to Israel. Who is over all. I think the the most high is who's that's connected to who is over all. But Wait, um, drop down to verse um, I had to look into it. 13. Verse 13 of chapter, Romans chapter 9. Mm -hmm. As it is written, 
Jacob have I loved? Look, I'm telling these Romans because who would who would Christians say the Romans are, right? Anybody know? But they say specifically these Romans are white people. They wouldn't say Edomites. Okay, they're gonna say Caucasians, right? They're gonna say Greece. These are white people, right? But we understand that Esau is the Edomite. Who <laughs> like, or not Esau is the Edomite, but the white man is Esau, which is the Edomite. So right here we're reading for Jacob have I love. Keep going. But Esau have I hate. So why the hell would he be telling these people who we know are the Edomites that God hates them? That don't even make no damn sense. And see, you just drop down. You just you just drop down seven verses. <laughs> you know, we talk about the content. You had to read them seven verses, but we'll say that for another video. All right, we'll say that for another video. So we see here that you know he just missed. He just tore up that Romans nine. Um, I don't know if I showed that video or not. I think I did though. But let's go back here. All right. We showed you what these Christians were taking this stuff out of context. Right. It's like he was talking about what he talked about, <laughs> and then he like kind of ventured to a little bit of something else. He was like, matter of fact, let me get back on point. And then got right back to what he was talking about for more clarity. Yeah. And this is what's so cold, right? So all the way from eight, nine, ten, and then we're reading this verse eleven and one. And I say then we showed you what he was pre he already previously just went over what he was talking about. Let me sum all this up for you. Yeah, let me sum all this up. Israel, 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 Israel. Now he's gonna sum it up, right? Go ahead. I say then, have God cast away his people? Mm -hmm. God forbid. God forbid? No, right? Go ahead. For I also am Israelite. Go ahead. Of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Keep going. God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. God has not put away the Israelites, which he foreknew. We already understand who this is. Go ahead. Won't he not what the scripture saith it of uh, Elias? And uh, Elias, which is Isaiah. Go ahead. How he make an intercession of God to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets mm -hmm. and dig down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. So it's talking about how the Israelites will kill all their prophets. Go ahead. But what's the answer of God unto him? Again, another negative. Be doing Israelites killed all their prophets. Elijah, Elijah thought he was by himself. Go ahead. I have reserved to myself seven thousand men. So what is he quoting? Um, ah, uh, dang. Uh, what was it? Elias, right? He thought he was the only one that was keeping the commandments at that time. So right here he's showing the Lord saying, no, no, no. It's also more people who are keeping the commandments. I reserved seven thousand men who also keeping the commandments. Is it literally seven thousand? No. It's dealing with a number of completion. He has a complete number of Israelites in that time that's keeping the commandments just like you, even though you don't see it, right? Go ahead. I have reserved to myself 7,000 men. That's 7,000, uh, number of completion. That's over my head, so my pay rate. Taint that which he's seeking for. Israel has not obtained. A... <laughs> he says, Israel not obtained what they seek for? Watch what he say. Taint that which he's seeking for, but go ahead. But the election hath obtained it. But the elect within the elect have obtained it. Go ahead. And the rest were blinded. And the rest of the Israelites were blinded. A remnant. Only a remnant of Israel have obtained it. And all the rest of them were blinded. Hmm. Right? Let me get Matthew 24 and 24. Just to show you another. So who's the, you know, who's getting, who, who's, who's the remnant? Is the remnant the, the ruling class? Or the, the the remnant are these poor Jews. Yeah, the remnant are these poor Jews who came in. I would assume that will be how you break that down. The remnant would be the poor Jews. And then the blinded are the um are the Jews, are the ruling class Jews who didn't believe. Even though, you know, we see in the text that uh, we see some of them believing. Of the elect within the elect. This is Matthew verses 24 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. For there shall a Okay, that was it. We almost done, y'all. And shall more turn away things. ungodliness from Jacob. Mm -hmm. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. And that's dealing with the Israelites. He said concerning the gospel, they're enemies for your sake. These are other Israelites. He's saying other Israelites are enemies for your sake. Go ahead. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Mm -hmm. But as touching the election, they are beloved but for God, the Father's sake. But God still loves them, though. That's so crazy. They're Israelites who are enemies to you, but concerning the gospel, but kind of touching the elect, they're still loved by God. You know why? Because God's still going to save all Israel. God still loves these people. So the ruling class are enemies to the poor class, I guess, the poor believing, the unbelieving rich is enemies to the poor believing uh jews but we still don't have northern kingdom uh being involved but we don't split the jews up into two categories uh unbelieving ruling class 
in a believing class. They still get the kingdom. They just don't get it that first go round. Some of our people gonna have to die. They don't get it that first go round. Mm. That's probably that reincarnation. That's the thing saying, do it. Like when we out there teaching on the block, talking to our people, how they just ignore us, and a lot of them really hate us. But God still loves them, and we still love them. We still go out there and preach and teach to them, regardless. Mm -hmm. They just gotta, what they say, uh, learn after death, pain after death. Yeah, they're gonna learn it once your ass. <laughs> So it said it's just like our people on the streets, but are our people on the streets jealous? Those unbelieving folks, are they jealous that us pro pro righteous teachers are out there teaching the word? Are they jealous of us? We're enemies, but it's enemies because we're trying to teach them, trying to bring them back to Christ. We're trying to bring them back and teach them who they are. But are you saying that they're jealous? Is that that's provoking them to jealousy? Brothers gonna say, yeah, yeah. Die, nigga. And they, and they say hello to ICB and missile face to face. Uh, where we at now? Where 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 we at? Is that uh 29? 29? Finish 29 and 30. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Yeah, he promised something to Abraham and he's not gonna repent from it. Go ahead. <laughs> For as ye in times past have not believed God, mm -hmm. yet have now obtained mercy. Their yeah, you get a chance to repent because those ruling class Jews at that time, they didn't understand what was going on. But the thing is, we needed them. You see, that's 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 rough. The ruling class Jews didn't believe, so the poor righteous Jews got 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 an opportunity to sal for salvation. Like, when did Israel not have the opportunity for salvation? When did why the why would the why would the regular Jews why would the poor righteous why would the poor unrighteous Jews need to need a, another set of Jews the rich ruling Jews to to fall away to fall away in order to gain so you'll have to show me where did those Jews fall away at you have to establish that first. That's why I asked it about the the precept to show that um, because we always weren't keeping the laws. We was always, if according to y'all, we was always Gentiles. Every captivity. You might well say we're a Gentile because we getting cast into gen captivity to captivity, captivity, captivity. Like when did we believe? To be honest to you. <laughs> when were we keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, man? Come on now. We don't get the kingdom unless they don't take it right we don't get the kingdom unless the jew the poor righteous jews don't get the kingdom unless the rich the rich jews fall away and reject the kingdom basically we had to get kicked out of jerusalem we had to get put in on west coast of africa and we had to be put on slave boats why so the northern kingdom can get an opportunity to come into this thing we don't get the kingdom everybody gets the kingdom not just the jews not just southern kingdom Everybody gets the kingdom, bro. So let me get uh that's pretty much Not the end of my lesson. I'm gonna just get a couple precepts uh just to finish it off. Also, our northern kingdom. They didn't bro. understand what was going on. But the thing is, we needed them. We don't get the kingdom unless they don't take it, right? Basically, we had to get kicked out of Jerusalem. We had to get put in on the west coast of Africa and we had to be put on slave boats. Why? So the northern kingdom can get an opportunity to come into this thing. So that the northern kingdom can get an opportunity to come into this thing. And so he drug that northern kingdom into this thing. All right. Let's read one more time. Through their unbelief. Yeah, you get a chance to repent because those ruling class Jews at that time, they didn't understand what was going on. But the thing is, we needed them. We don't get the kingdom unless they don't take it, right? Basically, we had to get kicked out of Jerusalem. We had to get put in on the west coast of Africa and we had to be put on slave boats. Why? So the northern kingdom can get an opportunity to come into this thing. It is piss poor argumentation. Typically. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, in, in most parts. So we don't get the kingdom. Everybody gets the kingdom. Not just the Jews, not just southern kingdom. Everybody gets the kingdom, bro. So let me get, uh, that's pretty much the end of my lesson. So that's the, you know, he pretty much wrapped that thing up. I don't think I watched more than that. And um, 
you know, I watched the thing, but I didn't hear him break down that 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 grafting in. I didn't see him uh, put those puzzles together. And I may be at the end of the video, but, you know, just seeing his premise being it's pretty much the opposite of what uh, Alizar had brung out. So somebody's wrong. But I think, you know, I think you, you're both wrong. <laughs> you're both wrong. But uh, even within that methodology between y'all, um, y'all have to figure that thing out, man. Y'all need to go back and figure that thing out. And you figure it out, I'll take the video down. Um, and then if, if you know, if it's something else, if I see you break it down. When I say you break it down, then I may do a refute video to what it's actually supposed to be. But again, I know the barber in this thing 10 plus years. And um, uh, again, what I'm speculating is that the doctrine changed. The doctrine changed um, after that debate, and something new was taught. Um, that 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 provoking to jealousy was a heathen, but the bar saying that provoking to jealousy is the Southern Kingdom jealous of the rich Southern Kingdom, and that jealousy was needed. So that the northern kingdom can come in. Y'all tell me I'm lying. Is that not what we just heard? Listen, y'all. I hope this thing was edifying. Um, I pray these brothers get this thing. Become on one accord with this thing. And, um, um, you know, they can figure this thing out. And then hopefully they can come to, you know, you know, to, to really just see that they, these are regular Gentiles. It's one more thing that I want to bring out because I, I didn't have a video here, but... Uh, Brother DeBar did use the Hosea in Romans 9. He did use the Hosea, the Loami, and uh, not a people to establish that. Um, this was Northern Kingdom also, but I didn't put it there. Um, but I want to show you what Deacon says about that. Saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles. Excuse me. That thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. So... The disciples are interpreting this as it's the Israelites' job to be a light. Now, one could say, well, doesn't that mean that since the Gentiles here are non-Israelites and the apostles quote that uh, that same thing in Acts 13 and 47, does that make the people that the apostles went to non-Israelites? Absolutely not. All throughout the New Testament, you can identify the Israelites being called by Gentile names. Even Paul was called a Roman. Even the word in the Greek for Gentile. He, he used the example Paul was called a Roman. Paul was a Roman. He was a Roman citizen, brother. In Luke 7 and 5, I believe, it's applied to the nation of Israel. The Lord in Christ. He said Luke 7 and 5 is Israel. He's, he's like he's bringing out this great point about Luke 75 being Israel. I'm gonna share my screen, man. Let's look at that real quick. I was gonna do it on a little separate video, but why are we here? Why are we here? Let's go ahead. Luke 75. And this is some of that trickery, man. Like we don't need that, man. Let's just be solid. Let's just be solid, man. Uh he says, For he loveth our nation. And so right here is it's the word ethnos, which is a word can be synonymous with Gentile sometimes. Um, and he hath built us a synagogue. All right. He built us a synagogue. He loveth our nation. So he's saying that this this is Israelites and this is proven that uh, Israelite Gentiles can be, you know, be synonymous, you know, with with uh, Jews and if no a nation can be Jews, <clears throat> but man, come on, y'all. Come on now. For he loveth our nation. And it's showing you here that that's not, that's not his nation. That this is a Gentile who built a synagogue for some Jews. Keeping yourself cut up, man. Y'all got to stop. I got to stop with the semantics, man. It ain't worth it. Anybody can fact check that. I'm a million percent sure. He said he a million percent sure. Lord in Christ. So what are the disciples doing here? There's a difference between application of scripture and fulfillment of scripture. Now, I just learned that from him. 
application of scripture and fulfillment of scripture. There's a difference. Okay, it's a difference. So he went he went to Isaiah, I forget what, uh, exactly what text was something 47. Uh, Y'all can push it back to see it. Um, that to be a light, he have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles. He's saying uh, here that that is natural Gentiles. But he's saying when it's used in Acts 13, 47, it's really Israelites. And there's a difference between application and fulfillment. Let me make sure I said that right, because I just learned it. Application of scripture and fulfillment of scripture. And fulfillment of scripture, absolutely. And That's what he any said. Any Christian apologist would agree with me because they say that Paul. And the Christian apologists will agree with him. I remember uh Alays are saying that, you know, man, you know, Brother Phoenix just probably he just probably, you know, he too into um he's too into trying to debate the apologists. And he's trying to beat them at their game. Now he's sitting up here saying, Well, the apologist is going to. Duh, 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 duh. Paul did it here in Romans 9. Did it here in Romans 9. Scripture and fulfillment of Scripture. And any Christian apologist would agree with me because they say that Paul did it here in Romans 9. They say that the disciples were applying scriptures and not necessarily um, taking them to be fulfilled. And what, see, they are applying scripture. So, what he, if he's doing that, he's trying to agree with the, 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 the Romans 9, uh, when it's saying the not a people, um, which we see that at, uh, Eleazar, chief priest, said that not a people was Babylon. All right. He didn't, he didn't go to Hosea to establish that it's not a people. Debar did that. Uh, he's saying that that not a people was Gentiles was Babylon that was pretty much already fulfilled like and we and, and today we even today we're getting jealous of rich uh, Gentiles but the bar is saying we're getting jealous of rich um, Israelites rich unbelieving Israelites and then we see here um, where the bar used the Romans I meant that Romans 9 um with the not a people he he pulls the precepts in hosea who in hosea is talking to the northern kingdom to establish that it's talking about israelites uh of the northern kingdom and then we're seeing here that deacon <laughs> deacon is coming to saying well the romans 9 is not um it's not really um it's applied but it's not fulfilled okay so it's not really um, even though you go to the Hosea, that's what he's quoting. The Hosea that's talking about the Northern Kingdom is still not really the Northern Kingdom, but it's still, um, it's still natural Gentiles. It's talking to natural Gentiles. And even though he's quoting Hosea that's talking about the Northern Kingdom, it's still talking about, um, it's applied, not fulfilled. So it's talking about, um, he's still talking to Gentiles there, uh, saying that. The people that were not a people. And, um, you know, even though I believe that's what it is, that's still hard for me to eat, you know. Uh, even though I do believe Paul was talking to um, natural Gentiles, um, him quoting that verse, I, you know, I'm with the applied version. That's how I see it. But, Man, it's still hard to swallow with, you know, he's quoting that natural, uh, he's quoting, he's quoting um, that Hosea, which was talking to the Northern Kingdom. So it's like, it's hard to get around that. Uh, even though I've, I've had places where he's done it, um, he's done it other times and he's used that methodology uh, in other ways. And so that's what helped me digest it, but it's still hard to digest. But again, man, all three of these folks are saying something completely different. That's my whole point with this video. We got, we got, we got the elders teaching something completely different. Um, and I think that again is because it's an adjustment. We're trying to adjust and figure out this Romans 9, 10, and 11. And we're still making these adjustments, even though we've been in the truth 15 years, uh, because we just can't deal with that pre-notion. We still have that pre-notion that uh, salvation is for Israel alone. Let's finish this up. In these matters, for an example, 
Christian apologists say this all the time. In Romans 9 and 24, we go here to prove that Paul is identifying them as Israelites. Because what does Paul do? Romans 9 and 24, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles, as he said also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which are not my beloved. And it shall come to pass in the place where it said unto them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. He's quoting Hosea. And in Hosea, this passage in context is talking about the northern kingdom of Israel. And you know what's... <laughs> You know, so 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 the bar and deacon um said that's what they would go to. But um Ale Eleazar, chief priest, he um he believes that's Babylon. So Christians will say, nah, he's not saying that that's fulfilled in Romans. He's it's applicable, but it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when we do it. But that's just proper hermeneutics. When you because we can identify every church Paul wrote to as Israelites. He reminds them that they're Israelites. So all those who are getting salvation in the New Testament, the Gentiles that are getting salvation in the New Testament will be Israelites being called after the Gentile nations in which they reside. That's fact. That's all factorials. Now, <laughs> those are all factorials. Oh man, but yeah, man, y'all, y'all, you know, y'all getting, y'all got tied up, man. That thing is, that thing, that Romans is beating y'all up, man. Paul, no, my pistols of Paul are beating you up. But uh, I yield with that, y'all, man. Y'all be blessed. I hope this thing was edifying. Uh, pray, brothers, get this thing together. You know, it's different when you when you when you one body y'all been there at the same time, and all three of y'all are saying something different. Uh, but you know, you always have brothers coming in from different places and different doctrines, different pre notions that uh, may speak a little different. Even in the uh, body that I'm I'm with now, you know, we may speak some things different, and then we may sit down on some things. We may not disagree. We may still be teaching a certain way. Then we may agree, and then. So, you know, them things can happen with that. But when, when y'all been together 12 years, 15 years together, uh, 20 years together, uh, y'all should, y'all should be, be, be pretty sound on, um, should be pretty sound on Romans. All right. But, um, I yield with that, man. Y'all be blessed. Shalom.